up nerds we're back working on the LeBaron again we got a, like a pretty good day it's a little overcast it rained earlier it's probably gonna rain off and on but uh I actually drove this the other day we took it out I took it down put some gas in it uh, did some burnouts with it bounced down the road because the air shocks are not working at all so I'm gonna see if a couple of my friends have some springs that they can sell me really cheap or you know see if somebody on one of the message boards has something or See if I got something laying around I can slap in this thing just to get it up off the bump stops and then throw some used shocks in it or see whatever I got laying around and put in this thing because I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible. And then, uh, but anyway, I got back. I was doing a pull and it started charging at like 18 volts. And I was like, hmm, that's probably why none of the lights work on this <laughs> because they're all burned out. So I'm gonna put in the voltage regulator that was hooked up to this, but it was hooked up in junction with the PCM. So I'm going to delete the one that's hooked up to the PCM. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet, but I'm gonna hook up the uh, Mopar P uh, voltage regulator and go from there, see if that makes it charge consistently. And if not, then we'll have to figure out another option. Let's get started. So that was March 6th. It's now the 12th. I troubleshot this car back and forth. Uh, tried installing jumper wire directly from the battery to the voltage regulator. Tried reinstalling the PCM control. Uh, long and short of it, I think I fried the uh, alternator when I installed it. So my wife, for years, you know, has always told me whenever I have an electrical problem, double check your grounds. She's always nagged me about it. Double check your grounds. You know, like a car won't start. Double check your grounds. Headlights don't turn on. Double check your grounds. The fuel pump died. Double check your grounds. And I would say about a third of the time she's right. So when I was, I came in and I was like, oh, man, I don't know what's going on. The car just started overcharging. She's like, oh, you should probably double check your grounds. And I was like, it's not grounds, honey. It's not the grounds on this. So I was taking the alternator off and there's a ground lug directly on the alternator. I thought it was just a little mounting bolt, but the alternators on turbo dodges are isolated. So there's a little eight millimeter bolt that is a grounding lug and it was melted. And I was like, that's probably not good. So I, I fried the alternator. So I went and bought a new alternator. I'm going to return my voltage regulator, uh, exchange it out. Well, the problem is uh, yesterday it was 60 degrees. Today we have five inches of snow outside. Uh, I left the hood open on the wagon. I've been working on it in my barn because my garage, of course, is full of storage and my NYG. So now the engine bay is full of snow. And I don't want to go out and work on it right now, but... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find a, a hair dryer or something and try and melt out some of the snow. But it's like, I think it's like 28 degrees and dropping outside. It's going to get down to 16 tonight. It might get up to 40 tomorrow. And it's still really windy. So I don't know how much I'm going to get done. But, you know, I'm not going to get anything done by just, you know, moping around and drinking coffee in the house because it's snowing outside. So I'm going to take off my shorts I was wearing and put on some long pants and see what I can get done. So I didn't exactly shut the, the barn door yesterday and it's not like it would have done much. So like everything's coated in snow, everything, like <laughs> the engine bay, all the wiring crap I done. I tried putting a neon alternator in here. I don't even know where to start with this, but might as well just get started. So, that was really annoying, but I'm done. I got it charging. Um, I'll explain everything that happened to this. I'll show you some of the process I had to go through to fix it. It took me entirely too long to figure out that I had multiple broken parts that were conflicting so thankfully 
it's charging now it's getting good voltage and I can start the process from here to addressing the suspension on this and getting myself or not myself my wife a very nice summer cruiser so let's continue to get into this gotta forgive my talking today I'm not having a good day with my speech anyway um, this is the alternator that I bought to replace the original one and it's actually bad so I took it for a test drive came back it wasn't working so I talked to a few people they said to check the field wires these are the field contacts they said that if it is an open connection where there is no connectivity between these two that means that the alternator is bad internally so this is a neon alternator I had laying around that is good and I have my voltmeter set to uh, check connectivity or they I forget what they call this term but anyway you know when it when it senses zero resistance it makes a tone so there's one field wire there's the other so the field wires are still good on this one we're right here it's open connection which means that the the field connections are not good on here if you check the ground between these it's good there nothing there now there should be a connection here as well so that was one of the things I had bad the other issue I ran into is that my voltage regulator was fried and then the new one I bought also got fried because it was wired incorrectly so I had to get a third one and wired it correctly and I tried running the alternator without um, having a key on wire set up and I'll show you what all this mess is in a second I tried run, running it without a key on wire and it would not charge the car so this this alternator in this car the one for an 86 is not a self igniting or self exciting alternator it needs a key on to the uh, regulator to charge by the way, big shout out to the guys over at TurboMopar.com. I've been a member there since like 2009. I made a thread because I was like getting pretty frustrated chasing my tail with this car having its weird charging issue. And the user James Monty linked me to the Learning Center, which had this diagram. It helped me figure out that my voltage regulator was wired up backwards. And that's what fried my voltage regulator. It was also making the car not charge. And once I got my my third voltage regulator got it in the car and got it wired up that's what got me on the track to getting the car charging now i had heard all sorts of stuff about how running just the voltage regulator on these with a key on with a factory harness uh could get it fed with bad voltage and would cause it to charge funny so while i was troubleshooting this i got a, a relay from the parts store for a couple bucks, wired it up to be fired off of the factory wiring, and then I ran a wire directly to the battery to feed this, you know, clean voltage basically directly from the battery. Um, and then, you know, hacked away at the factory connector so that none of this, not, nothing is left except for the positive wire. And it looks like a mess, but it works fine. I just, I need to zip tie everything out of the way so nothing gets messed up. In fact, that's just the old field wire hanging down. Now, I haven't driven it yet. So, a couple zip ties, and I'm going to be good to go. So, that's what all this is. This is all just, you know, one's a uh, triggered key on wire. One is a wire that goes to the, uh, to the field on the alternator. And one is a direct feed from the battery that runs over here to this relay. And I'm actually going to mount this relay right on there like that and call it good i might loom that up and tape it up make it look pretty but realistic realistically i wanted to do this so i'd never have to do it again and this is going to be a guarantee that i never have to do this again realize
up that I never told you how a relay works or how to wire it up. So I'm not going to take it apart now, but I will explain it. I never mentioned it when I was recording the video, but a relay is almost like a second switch. There are four pins on a relay. There's a ground wire. Then there's three basically power wires. There's the your high voltage feed. That's going to come and should have a fuse on it. I don't because I'm living a little dangerously. And that come I have that feeding from the battery. Then there's the the wire that goes to the device that you're triggering. So this is used as a horn relay normally. Um, you could also use it for fog lights or headlights or anything that you want to power off with high voltage, but your source, you don't want to have a lot of voltage going through it. And then this is the trigger wire. And I'm, I'm going to put up a little picture of what it looks like. You can pause the video if you really want to see what it looks like. So it's very useful, you know, in situations like this where, you know, you have older wiring that might not be supplying tw a full 12 volts all the time. It really only needs to see about 9 volts for it to trigger the relay off to get your full 12 volts to go through. So certain situations you're, you'll get voltage drop as if you have a small gauge wire that runs a long distance or a wire that's kind of old and might be a little corroded and you're just kind of Sometimes you're band-aiding a situation. This is going to be a better solution for the process. These do need a good ground. So um, I have a self-tapping screw. I just ran into the uh, fender wall over here. So for all these terminations that I made to plug into the relay, I got these from Walmart a while back. And they fit onto the connections of the relay perfectly. You could even grab a relay from the junkyard and grab a handful of them from the junkyard. Just in case they're not any good. Let's see. Yeah, we can get that to focus. And then to crimp them, I just use this part of the pair of pliers. And these are these are Harbor Freight pliers because I lost my good ones. And bought these because I was, you know, in a bind on a road trip. And just stuck them in there and you know, gave it a little hit <laughs> and crimped them down. You know, so for a couple bucks, you could be on your way to being, you know, getting some wiring done. And all I'm going to do is wrap some tape around this because there's, you know, 12 volt connections. And if they happen to touch a ground, they could arc out and, you know, my wife's going to be driving this. If it was me, I'd probably just leave it open. But my wife's going to be driving this and I don't want her to yell at me on the side of the road. Why isn't the car charging? You don't love me. You're trying to get me stuck in Kansas or wherever she's going to take this thing. She'll probably never take it that far, but, you know, I just don't want to hear it. But this is also a decent solution where if I need to troubleshoot it in the future, I'll be able to just, you know, pull the pins off and put my wire meter on it. And there, it's just kind of out of the way. So anyway, check the charging voltage on your car. It's pretty easy. You just got to start it. this puppy over to volts now my meter's a little messed up so i gotta press on the screen sometimes gotta make sure it's on dc tuck that into the ground tuck that onto the positive side 1447 that's kind of what you want to see especially if you're using the external regulator if the ground is bad the voltage goes up if the feed wire is bad the voltage goes up you know, you'll see uh, 15, 15 and a half. If everything's bad, you'll see 17 volts like I was seeing, I, you know, when I was trying to troubleshoot this. So yeah, realistically, this was an easy fix. It's just, I was dumb and kind of chased my tail around rather than just, you know, fix the actual problem. I also did not diagnose it properly. Um, you know, I had a bad, my new alternator was bad, but I did that. And then my voltage regulator was also bad. Side note, it is possible to mount a neon alternator on one of these. And if my voltage regulator had been good, I'd have been running that right now. But the voltage regulator wasn't good and I didn't know it. So 
Um, anyway, I guess what's next? Uh, I'm probably also going to upload the video I took of me driving this to the gas station and, you know, then doing some burnouts while I was driving. This had a torn vacuum line. I, the parts store didn't have the right size, so I just, you know, adapted this one to fit. It's right on the fuel pressure regulator. This is a one-to-one -one regulator, so as the fuel pressure increases, or as the boost pressure increases, so does the fuel pressure. So basically, in one of the times when I brake boosted this, it actually hit boost cutout. And it, I mean, it was fast. It was like properly fast. But that was because it was hitting, you know, 14 pounds of boost while running lean, which is, you know, a very dangerous combination. So anyway, uh, I think what I'm gonna do next on this is address the rear suspension. I have some springs I can try to use. I'm hoping that they don't raise the car. And then I'm gonna put on some cheap shocks or yeah, probably get some part store shocks and then go from there. So anyway, follow along. I'm gonna, like I said, post that video of me doing some street pulls with this and go from there. So, you know, if you care about stuff like this, like the video, share it, subscribe it. I know this one's kind of BS because it isn't exactly what I wanted to do, but it's what I got done. Not sure what I'm going to do next. The weather's supposed to be nice this week. I might dig out my wagon. I really need to fix the floor pan on it, and I'm definitely not going to do it right. So that's going to be interesting. Get the f*** out.